And the speaker is going to tell you what clients and customers can expect from the next Typo 3 version. Please give an applause for Benny Mack. I guess all of you know him or have heard of him. He's a kind of product manager for the coming Typo 3 version. And uh, what is also a great pleasure, we have never met in person, although we live in the same city. So <laughs> that should be a reason for all of you guys to come to the next Typo 3 conference, because it's the place where you can meet other members of the community, even if they're from your own city. <laughs> so have fun with the next talk. Okay, so I'm, I'm Benny. You probably heard of uh, me before. I've done some releases. I'm part of the CMS team that um, steers and, and thinks of the next versions and the, the next ideas that we have in, in mind. And that's what I want to share with you today, what we've done in, in the last six months, actually, what we've thought of, but first, I want to, you know, ask myself and ask you, where do, where do we come from? We all, or most of us, use Typo 3 CMS, have used it in the past, maybe started with version 3.5, personally I did, um, and um, there are so many things to talk about where do we come from, but um, I'm only focusing on the last, let's say, two or three years, um, and only about two topics. Product changes, what, ha what, what were the big changes in the, in the past, and how did we do the releases and the versions. So for the um, product changes, uh, if we take version 6.2 that uh, most of us use for new projects uh, with CMS, we now got the file abstraction layer which is finally like a good, finally a good replacement for uh, the digital asset management, where you can put stuff on top, put your data in, in the cloud or the, your assets. Um, we went away from this PI-based stuff, use XBase, and everybody who used XBase knows the grip of, or a small peak of how Flow works. Um, then we did this huge, massive change, of course, with the 6.0, with the PHP namespaces. We did a lot of things uh, that I personally like with the whole caching stuff, which was spread in all the different parts of the CMS core. And uh, we finally, if you start with a new project, uh, you get a native Unicode support if you've, um, yeah, if you had problems in the past, which I had with 4.2, then um, you don't have to think about these things anymore. And with 6.2, we also got this uh, PHP composer, the basic support uh, under the hood, which is also helpful. But um, uh, we'll come to that later. Um, the other thing that we, um, that I, if I reflect on, you know, how things developed, was we had this 4.5. 4.6 every six months, which was nice. And what happened with version five? There was like a big discussion uh, one or two years ago, uh, two years ago. Um, we finally have it sorted out that we have Neos, we have CMS, and we have Flow, and we, you know, we can work with that. And people uh, usually talk to me like, okay, I have a new project. What should I use, Neos or CMS? And this question is not like a yes-no answer, or a CMS or NEOS answer, but something that you need to, to look at the specifications and the requirements. And um, personally, and that, that's something you know, that always comes up, I had some, some guys from the development team that said, okay, let's just stop with 6.2, and then uh, we'll just use uh, NEOS for everything that's, uh, you know, that's uh, set up initially uh, from scratch for all our projects. And, but what if, with my existing projects? I run like, um, I set up, I think, over 150 installations, and it's just not like, okay, once we're at 6.2, which is a lot of uh, things 
uh, to upgrade to 6.2, but you know, what's, uh, what's uh, the point where I can say um, CMS is done and we use NEOs all the time? My personal statement for that is, well, right now we have a lot of things that CMS can do really nice and helps in our, in our daily business. And then we have NEOS and Flow, which helps in a lot of things that we do in our daily business as well. And it's up to you to choose. And um, I personally don't mind if, or don't care if somebody chooses CMS or NEOS, as long as it's something in the Type 3 universe. Because uh, there's so many benefits to, to that instead of using, you know, I don't name any other product. Um, but uh, there are so many um, benefits to that, and we know them because that's why we're here. But yeah, so what are the benefits of 6.2? Well, there was so many changes under the hood. All of the extensions, or most of the extensions, are not compatible. That's you know the the stuff um, that I get. Okay, so I I need to make sure the extensions work with all of the supported. Um, supported versions that are there, and we need to put so much effort to upgrade to 6.2. And personally, I don't like it as well. So that's something I noticed, okay, that's, that's um, something that needs to be done, but um, there's no, no benefit that we can sell to, to our customers and say, if you upgrade to 6.2, well, basically, your system lives longer, but that's it. Uh, there's so, there are not a lot of uh, interface changes, but there's some nice additions. And with, a, with our current versioning scheme of having like LTS releases and the stuff in between, um, there, there's too many things breaking. And um, I looked at that and I thought, okay, we need to make sure that this stuff doesn't happen in the future. Because people ask me, why should I upgrade to the latest version 6.2? We'll come to the answer later. Uh, <laughs> I also want to give you a quick um, you know, look back into the release cycles that we had. We had the, these phases of, you know, we all know it from software products, alpha releases, beta releases, and a feature freeze, no, nothing new can go in and we have these, these six months in total, uh, and then we have the release candidates, and there's finally the latest 6.0, 6.2, you name it. And if you look at the supported versions, it's 4.5, 4.7 until the end of this month, 6.0 and 6.1 and 6.2. So four versions, we had in April, we had like five versions, which all need to be maintained, and the extensions need to be, you know, somehow be supported as well. The introduction of this whole, uh, or the, the, the problem arose from this long-term support idea, which is for me uh, a dilemma with a, with a stage that we had. Before 4.5 or 4.4, we had these releases once a year, every 15 months, and um, then we got the finally the, the LTS and people could stay with 4.5. Um, but then we had so many changes, so many versions, and we said after the next uh, or two versions later, stuff that we don't use anymore that is you know um, not as good anymore, we we deprecate and we remove it, and that's that's a big clash for most of the um, the developers and also. In the end, for me as, an, as a um, stakeholder or in a, a customer or agency, um, I can't easily upgrade like this. And uh, we looked at some statistics. Everybody loves LTS, or 60 to 70% use LTS um, versions, and the rest, I don't care. And some guy said, okay, I wanted to have this new feature in 4.7, great, but... Um, now I'm stuck because it's not as long as supported as 4.5. What do I do? So if you look at the chart, you see we got the LTS in 2011. I thought it, I think it was, 
January, something like that. And it still has extended support, so it's, it's supported until next year. We got the 4.6, which is hopefully nobody's using that anymore. 4.7, I still have installations with that. 6.0, I also have installations with that. <laughs> 6.1 and 6.2, finally the LTS. And if you look at this, um, this uh, time frame, it's really three years of a lot of development and no, no you know, real jump to go to, to uh, the next version as a user um, point of view, but also um, it's too long for all the new stuff that it gets in. And that was the initial idea of the six months releases, that we can get new features in and, and improvements in way faster. So, actually, we should release 6.3 at some point. Well, 6.2 extended until I think it was released in May, March or April. And 6.3 should be, you know, basically underway and available, you know, tomorrow would be nice. But the big jump, uh, the interesting jump for all of us is basically from 4.5 to 6.2. And the downsides? Alpha and beta versions, nobody cares about them. Um, all the features that I want to have in, I just wait until the next LTS and make sure that all the stuff gets in, and then it's not really yeah, usable. You, and you always make pressure. But if, it, if we don't get it in this LTS, then I have to wait so much longer until all my customers can use it. So the feature freeze phase was too long, and then it took forever, that's why the 6.2 release was so, um, it took so long. And once you have like four or five versions that need to be supported, you need to make all the, the maintenance changes back to, to these versions, make sure that it runs with PHP 5.2 and all this stuff. And again, some people used 6.0, but um, they're now in a small dilemma. And I don't see any reason why I should sell my customers 6.0 if they don't need FEL and it's kind of like not really tested. Does it make sense? Um, it leads us to frustrated developers, extension developers, and agencies and customers who say, okay, what's going on here? It's, it's like the super four point whatever and 6.2, what's with these, these naming things? And we sat down and thought, okay, what did we learn? Um, the, these huge PHP under the hood changes were necessary, definitely. There are benefits to that, and um, the benefits are not visible yet, but um, we also want to make sure that these huge changes don't happen that much anymore. We also noticed, well, everybody loves LTSs. Uh, make sure that we do these kind of things and make sure that uh, after 6.2 there was the question, is there another LTS? And I can say, yes, there will be another LTS. But we noticed we want to change the focus, the target. The target. We want to make CMS easier to use. If I ask somebody with 4.5 and 6.2, I hardly get any feedback. Yeah, it's way better to, I can do my things, uh, my everyday things way faster. Um, we also want to make sure that the upgrades are easier. And if you set up a new website, it doesn't have to be big. It takes a lot of time to set it up. And that's also things that we noticed we haven't touched in the last two or three years since 4.5. We wanna, really want to change something there. However, I would say 6.2 is the best Type 3 version that we have. It's, it's really... I, I enjoy working with 6.2, but not with the upgrades, but with 6.2 I'm really happy. But there's still so much on our lists, on our personal lists. We have all these, these ideas and, and wish lists, and well, we get these wish lists actually. And so we thought, after thinking about this, what's going to, to happen? Should we all work on NEOS now? Should we rewrite 
the backend from scratch to have it mobile enabled, um, stuff like that. And we sat down and said, okay, we really love CMS. So we embrace what we have. We, we held it high, we hold it high to what we really love about CMS. And we wrote down the things that we love about it. The extension concept, uh, you know, the, the user uh, permission settings, um, is way better than everything else in the open source industry, I think. And it's been there for so long. We don't just rip it out and uh, replace it with something new because we think it's cool or it uses the new PHP features. But on the same, or like TCA, stuff like that, it's really nice. But on the same, at the same time, we want to not just stop here and rest. We want to innovate where it's possible and also where it's necessary. It doesn't mean innovate where possible means, okay, we can do we can actually innovate everything. We can, you know, let's, let's uh, don't use a page tree anymore and use something else because that's cool. We love the page tree. But um, there are other parts where we really think we have better, um, a better web standard format now that we can use. So our logical thing was we'll do a next version. And we just said, it's not, <laughs> it's not uh, version iOS 8, we call it CMS 7. Um, if you look at... Do not use that much colors. Yes. <laughs> not, not so many colors, okay. Um, I'll show you the next screen in a minute. Um, we're not at the version 8 yet, we don't need to jump over any versions, but we want to streamline the namings and the the thinking in our heads on how, you know, what does it break, can it break between 6.0 and 6.1, uh, that's something we don't want to worry about anymore. So we just use white and say it's CMS 7. Um, CMS 8 is next year, so we'll see that. <laughs> no. But um, what can we expect from that next version? Um, Again, I want to focus on two things, product changes and releases. And the first thing I want to talk about is that we shift the focus to the users, to the people that use the software every day. And the main change there is to, to pimp up, basically, the user interface. If you have these Type of 3 modules in the back end, basically everything looks different. <laughs> the one module, uh, is, is kind of like a page module. Well, everything should be a page module. It, you can, everything's with pages. Why is it called page module, for instance? We want to streamline that finally. We really want to touch things to make sure that they, they look the same. We have components that are quirky. You know, if you have flex forms and stuff like that, it looks different than the rest. And uh, then there are some components like the rich text editor. Just like, it looks like it's uh, bashed in there, and uh, it's, it's, it's from some other universe. Um, and we also still want to make sure that you can use it properly on a tablet, not on your cell phone, doesn't make sense for us um, to have that. Um, but that's the, the general movement towards uh, a UI that is really clean, and we want to look into new UI concepts and HTML, HTML5 ideas, and to make sure that we work with that. We don't want to support IE6 anymore. If you still need IE6, go with 6.2 or 4.5, and wait until all your customers have migrated to a new browser. Still, we don't go with the bleeding edge stuff, so I think we decided on Internet Explorer 9. If you need 8, go with 6.2. Because 6.2 will be supported until three or four years from now, so you'll live. Um, and then we have a lot of things, like the front-end editing, and it works, uh, but we never touched it, really. And I think if we put some effort in there, we have a nice uh, possibility alternative to, to work with content. So we don't, if you need like a really fancy uh, front-end editing uh, through Everything, I suggest using NIAS because CMS is using front-end editing 
just in a better way or more intuitive way. And then we have a lot of people, I have a, uh, some customers that work with Typo3 like, hmm, maybe once a month to add a new news article to their website. But then we have power users that you know, work with Typo3 CMS eight hours a day. And these users, we want to make sure that these are addressed properly. We want to help them edit records in a fast way. We want to improve the clipboard uh, ideas. These are, or the, the clipboard mechanism. These are all ideas from the user experience week that uh, happened two weeks ago. And we have a lot of concepts that we can now take and just code away. And we also th thought, well, if I need to edit a news article, the page tree is not important. Why do I still have this page tree there and the modules? I want to have a distraction for you, a free view on what I need to do. And the whole workspaces and workflows, apparently it's there, but it's, it's so hard to use and to understand. Of course, we have some bugs there, but it's, it needs to really help um, to, un to make it more intuitive. And then we also want to focus on the integrators because if you set up a new site with Typo3 CMS instantly uh, with your own templates, um, that could help a lot to, to really speed up using Typo3 CMS more. We want there, we have a lot of technology in, in the Typo3 CMS core, but we still noticed, okay, why do I need to go in this module to configure that and there? Because it's, it's kind of like the history. We want to sort that out and make sure our configuration for the website and the content is under the hood separated. So you can, you know, that would be a first step into this whole content migration stuff. Um, but also to make sure that you have different environments like a staging, testing environment, development and life environment. And you can all do this with your Git and version control stuff. Then people start, okay, and say, okay, I use Typo3, uh, but I don't know TypoScript. Um, we want to have TypoScript available so it's, it's, um, it has a lot of good defaults. It's standardized in the way it's written, uh, but you don't need it for everything anymore. You have good defaults basically for all your content elements. If you need to change the output, it should be done with, with Fluid because all the front-end guys know HTML, and then they, they get fluid, and then if they need some hardcore stuff, they can still do everything with TypoScript. We still need it, we still love it. Um, that's why we, we really want to say, we want to use the technologies the right way. We don't want to use TypoScript in the back end, um, as it is done, but uh, we want to move away from that to say, TypoScript is for the, the main front end rendering. You can use fluid for your, your page, um, set up and for a menu and stuff like that and for all the content elements. That also leads to having better standards. Um, I have installations where the integrators put their files in file admin, your, their templates, then they, some guys say, okay, we use extensions, put their, your TypoScript and your HTML in there and um, there's so much, uh, so much to do if you set up a new site. It just be, should be like 10 lines of code, use this template, and uh, that's it. Everything should be done um, from, from the, the system itself as a basic good default. And that's also where, where we want to embrace Fluid because it, we've, we noticed that it's really helpful for people to use Fluid and to get into the whole, into the whole CMS universe um, to start modifying the front-end output. And one thing that I think is, is really important, we've seen a lot of initiatives with, uh, on how to create new content types, content elements, like um, uh, TemplaVola did it. Uh, we got DCE, we got Flux and Fluid content and stuff like that. Uh, and they have a lot of good ideas, but also we want to have a, a good standard on how to do it. Right now, we have this text with image stuff and form and all these things. Actually, we would like to have a toolbox to create um, 
these things on your own. So if you need a slideshow plugin or like a carousel thing, whatever, uh, you create it in, in Typo3 CMS, and then you can just move it over to your next installation where you need the same content element. And one other thing is that we really want to have a clean core. We want to have the things that we don't need anymore uh, really removed from the core. We, right now, we move it into a, a separate extension, and then the separate extension will be available in the TER, so it's not gone. But I'm sure there's a lot of things uh, that you don't even know that are still exist and live inside the Typo3 CMS core. Uh, so if you uninstall the, the shipped form extension, there's still an original form extension from Casper from 2003 shipped with a core. And nobody knows how to use it and, uh, or like how to maintain it, and we don't maintain it. It shouldn't be there. So we want to have a, a small, clean core with the things, like a toolbox, with the things that you need and that you can build your stuff on. And the other thing that will change is that we, we're going to have a new strategy on how to get new versions out. You've seen this, the number seven, and um, I can tell you version 7.0 will be released next month. Um, that might be something that you think, okay, what, what should change there? Um, I will tell you a little bit about that in a second, but uh, just to make sure we're all on track, we will have an LTS version every one and a half years. So you're like, okay, now I, I need to sell my clients again that they can upgrade to the next LTS in, in a year. Um, basically, you can do it, but you can also um, say, because it's supported for three years, I'll skip the seven and go with eight. So when I upgrade to eight, I need to go to seven and then to eight, which should be easier to do. But um, the, the idea is that the barrier is lower to, to upgrade. And we want that uh, the possibility that you can actually say, seven is so good, customer, you really want to have seven. That's what, you, what, what, are, what the goal should be. You really want the new features that you can work with, and that's why you should upgrade. But it's all up to you if you want to stick with 4.2 or something. Um, and then we do these intermediate releases, like I mentioned, the 7.0. We call it snapshot releases, um, which will uh, be usable in production. And they will provide small steps to the next 7.1, 7.2, um, in order to make sure that it's not like as before that stuff breaks because we just came out with 7.3 and it's still not the LTS, etc. And um, we want to have these, this clear deprecation mode that if we deprecate something now, it will stay until 8, where it's going to be removed. So we call it the agile release cycle. We have smaller steps, and then sometime we'll have the 7 LTS, which I personally uh, plan on releasing in fall. There's no date set yet, but that's, that's our goal or our target. And then it goes further, and we have the 8 LTS, and then uh, we'll see what happens. But we'll focus on this part now because that's the interesting stuff for us. We have this 6 LTS and there will be the 7.0 release in November. And then from there on, we have smaller ah, 7.1. Oh, there's something missing. <laughs> we'll see. Ah. See, this is not how we're going to do it, but we have 7.0 <laughs> time travel and stuff. Um, we will have small releases, and these releases will have a focus on a certain topic. Like, okay, we'll get this mass editing stuff really going. So this is our focus for 7.1, for instance. 
Um, I think the overall usability experience is 7.1, but it's not done yet with that, but it's a, it's a major impact that we can, you know, make sure it's, um, we'll, we'll target on like two or three things that we're focusing on for the usability and get it done. Right now we've already incorporated uh, Twitter Bootstrap and Less to, to unify everything because there's so much CSS code, it's, hardly, uh, it's hard to maintain. Um, and then 7.2 will have a different focus, like this whole, uh, you know, make it better for integrators. And every release until the 7 LTS, which would be, you know, if you really love naming schemes, would be something like, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7.8, but you don't care, you just name it 7 LTS. That's the last seven major release within the 7 development cycle that we want to uh, publish, and then we just stabilize from there uh, for the next three years and give maintenance updates. And the, the, the idea of the smaller, um, the smaller steps is that really that all the active contributors and the other contributors um, really can focus on reviewing this one area and make sure it works. And then we can release it, and if there are small bug fixes, we can just add it to, um, to 7.2, for instance. The, the idea of the, you know, how long is 7.0 then supported, it's not going to be supported for 18 months. Because then we'd have, I don't know, 20, um, versions to to maintain. We want to make sure that it's so easy to upgrade, of course, because there's only one month or two months, eight weeks of development in between that you can easily upgrade while uh, running the next version, the 7 version. And the benefits for the coders are, of course, that my features get in earlier, get released, and maybe finally get tested. And we don't have to support all the versions anymore. And this focus uh, on these topics. Uh, and we have so-called merge windows within these six to eight weeks between the releases, where we actually, um, in the beginning, we get the new features in, and then we test them. And then we make sure that everything runs properly. We can revert it, because it's not a three-year development cycle. And it's also nice, because we do a lot of code sprints, I think, We've done nine code sprints this year um, to focus on these specific topics, and we can work on them. And then there are benefits for the world. <laughs> we have the snapshot releases. You can use them. You can actually upgrade easily. If I know I have a project which will, uh, which will um, go live in like a year, and I chose to use CMS, you can use CMS 7 already, because we don't remove stuff anymore, we only deprecate things, so you'll you have an easy upgrade path that not so many things will completely break and you have to start from scratch again. And we have the LTS releases, where we can just, uh, we don't have to wait three years, but we also don't have to, you know, take so much money from the client <laughs> um, to do the upgrades, and we have a lot of benefits there. Basically, it boils down to this. The future of CMS means that we will continue to evolve, to continue to develop CMS in small steps with focused targets. We finally have this uh, version 7 there. It's not, not a 6.3. We have a 7. We have the 7 LTS. Um, we have these visual improvements, which I think is, is totally overdue. And um, we have this faster way to set up new projects. And one thing that I wanted to mention is that we, we have composer support, but we want to migrate to an even better integration with composer that um, basically everything that you configure for your site may it be typo script and whatever, is inside a composer package created for you when you install typo3. And that way you can just move it to another project 
Or you can say, I have a project that runs, then I need flow for it. You can just include flow into Typo 3 CMS if you need it. So our next big stop will be 7 LTS. And if you're back here in a year, we want to release 7 LTS. So we'll do that. And I'm very happy that I think CMS 7 will rock and will be the stuff that you need um, to continue using CMS. And um, as mentioned, the, this first version, the first snapshot release will be in November, and the final in maybe at the next conference, so we can all drink a beer together. Uh, and of course, it's not just like you're sitting here and saying, mm, this all sounds nice, let the guys do the stuff, and we'll see if I upgrade or not. Your input is very helpful. It was helpful because um, the, the ideas that we have now just came because you gave us feedback. And the, the focus on these things helped us giving, uh, going into this direction. And if you have new ideas or like, OK, this is something that we really need to target, um, then we can work with 8 LTS or the, with a version 8. Um, and it helps to, you know, to get things done in a more agile way. You can join the development if you're a coder or if you run a business. I'd be happy to get your best coder to a code sprint um, that knows Typo3. Type or if you don't know Typo3 coding or core coding, you can join anyway because we've got like, I don't know, 30 new people through code sprints this year. Uh, that haven't attended it yet. So we have a lot of boost for the new development. And of course you can say, okay, I don't code, uh, I don't have any manpower in my company because they are all super busy, but I can host a code sprint next year, then I'll be happy to uh, take your card or anything because we want to do um, more code sprints next year. That's basically it. If you have any questions, uh, let me know now. <laughs>